Hey guys, Mr. Gardner here. And today I want to start us off on our unit of 3D shapes. So to start off, I just want to talk about three-dimensional shapes. And what a three-dimensional shape is, is it's an object that has a height, a width, and a depth. It takes up space in the real world. Okay, so any objects you really see are three-dimensional shapes. And you can see just from the video, um, this is a three-dimensional shape. It takes up space. The paper is three-dimensional, even though it's one of the dimensions is really small. This pencil, three-dimensional shape. So these are all three-dimensional shapes you would see, and that's what three-dimensional means. It means you are in three dimensions. So a good example of that might be like the Great Pyramids, right? They're three-dimensional shapes. Or a basketball that you shoot in the gym is a three-dimensional shape. Okay, and that's different from two-dimensional shapes, right? Two-dimensional shapes are um, just 2D. They only have two dimensions. They have like a height and a width or something, or a length and a width. So like if I was on this piece of paper and I was just to draw a square, that would be two dimensions, right? It's got a length, it's got a width, but it doesn't have that height component, so it's not three-dimensional. So that's the difference there between those. So we call those 2D, and something like this we would call three-dimensional 3D. Um, so what we want to do is we want to be able to describe these three-dimensional shapes. We want to be able to describe um, the different parts of them when we're looking at them. And so when we're looking at a three-dimensional shape, right? A three-dimensional shape will have a face. So like this whole spot here is a face, all right? It'll have an edge. So this is the edge here. It'll have a vertex. That's normally the corners. That's where edges meet to make a corner. That's the vertex, all right? And you can see that. And so all of them are vertices, okay? And usually when we stand them up, whatever side we're standing it on is considered its base. Okay, so if you look at this shape right here, this is a rectangular prism. All right, and it's got a square base. We can see the base is square. Okay, and it has height. A rectangular, it has rectangular faces. So all the faces on here are rectangular. And the top is also going to be a square. Okay, so that is going to be a rectangular prism. The next shape we'll look at is very similar to a rectangular prism. This is a cube. All right, now a cube, every side is a square. So all the faces are square. So no matter which way you set it on its base, it's always going to have a square base. Right, again, it has all these faces. So it has six faces. Okay, and we look at all its edges and its corners. All right. Next shape we're going to look at is a rectangular sorry, a triangular prism. So a triangular prism would sit on its rectangular base um, or it could sit on its triangular base, whichever way you want to put it. But it has two triangular sides and three rectangular faces, okay? Now these could be square faces, but in this case it's rectangular. Um, but the key is, is that that base is a triangle. So it's a triangular prism because uh, it goes up on all sides and has straight flat sides. All right, so you can see there, five faces. Okay, next object we're going to look at is we're going to look at a triangular pyramid. So now pyramids slant, their faces slant up when you look at them. And again, we always classify our pyramids by their base. And you can see that this pyramid has a base of a triangle. So it has one, two, three, four faces. Right, the base is a triangle, okay, and all of the faces are also triangles. So that is what we would call a triangular pyramid. The next shape we're gonna look at is very similar to the triangular pyramid. The only difference being is that the base is a square. So we just call this one a square-based pyramid. All right, and this is like the normal pyramid you used to see. It's like the pyramids in Egypt. They were square-based pyramids like this. Again, now this one has one, two, three, four, five faces. Okay, it's got these edges here. All right, so again, the faces are triangular and the base is square on a square pyramid. Okay, the next shape is very similar to the pyramid, but now we're gonna get into some round edges. Okay, so this is what we would call a cone. And again, you can look at the cone as it goes up and it looks like it's triangular in shape, 
all right but it's got round edges so we can't call them triangles right it's more of a, a conic a cone and the base is a circle so we can see there it has a circular base so it's a little bit different we don't call these faces anymore um, these would just be sides of the shape and this is a face because it's flat so it has one face and a cone and then again remember on a cone the base is a circle so that's really important to see so we can see that from all sides there so I'll take a good look at that so again just has one face and then this round cone on top all right the last shape we're going to look at once we're into that roundness now is another prism kind of but we call this a cylinder because it's round. So again, if we're looking at it, its base is circular. So a prism has a circular base, all right, you can see. So both sides are circular and then the edge around it is round and it goes all the way up into the circle. So it's almost like you have a flat circle and you raise it up and you lift it to make a cylinder. So a cylinder has two faces, right? And the faces are circles. Again, we can see that we have circles as faces and we've got that nice round edge around it, okay? So that's really nice. So those are the shapes we're gonna mostly be dealing with this week, okay? So the biggest thing is just describing their bases and describing their sides, their faces. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is this idea of perpendicular and this idea of being parallel. So what parallel means is that two things that are never going to meet so that they run in parallel with each other if I were to move these two pencils all the way this way to infinity, or all the way this way to infinity, these two pencils would never cross. That's what it means to be parallel. So if something's meant to be parallel, it should be at the same level as it, and they should never, never meet. So I mean, if I was gonna look at something like, here's this piece of paper, and I want something that's going to be parallel to that piece of paper, right then this piece of paper would be parallel to it I'm putting it above it in the same direction plane as the other paper and if I move them they would never cross so that's what it means to be parallel the next little definition we want to go over is perpendicular okay what perpendicular means is that if two lines are meeting and where they meet creates a 90 degree angle or a corner like this that you would see right so you can see that these pencils when they're put together like this, they are uh, perpendicular to each other. And we can see that if we were to lift that up and put it this way, right, we would see it's perpendicular right there at that edge where it makes a 90 degree angle. That means it's perpendicular, right? If you wanna see it with that paper example again, whereas this was parallel, the papers are parallel, they're not gonna meet. If I were to stick this paper up like this and go down, you can see that now that's perpendicular to it. You can see it creates that 90 degree angle there with this other piece of paper. Okay, so that's what it means to be perpendicular and parallel.